Are you scared of rides? Are you fed up with being the bag holder? I am. I was. Welcome to my part one Disney World ride walkthrough for the anxious, the fed up, the willing to change. Roll some form of intro. So today I want to focus on five rides in particular. Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Space Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean. I can't say this all at once. I can't think of five rides, but they're there. So in today's video, I'm just going to focus on five rides in particular that I think you could push yourself to do, especially if I can. I look at the teacups and get nauseous. I can do these rides. So, Space Mountain, Splash Mountain, Big Thunder Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean, finished with Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Yay, I've got all five! <laughs> all of which you can do, but I think it helps knowing a little bit more about them before you do it. This is going to be part one of four. We're going to go through Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and then finish with Animal Kingdom. Four videos, and it's going to be the most intense rides, rides that I've been on, managed to conquer, and rides that haven't been on, but I want to conquer. What we're going to look at is the drops in every ride ones that make your stomach go that's kind of like what i base it on and it's all in feet not meters and if it's dark and how fast you go so if you hate fast drops sudden drops drops this is the video for you every time i go to florida i really try and make the effort to push myself to go on a different ride and every time i go i'll take one off my oh my god i'm not going to do this list and I feel great afterwards and I try and do it at the beginning of the day so then I can just feel like Iron Man for the rest of the day. One day I'll be up sailing down Cinderella's castle shouting, is that all you've got? So let's begin with the Seven Dwarf Mine Train, one of my favourite rides now. It's the first ever ride I went on in Disney and I really wasn't sure because I can remember standing near the wall and seeing the drop and I really wasn't sure at that time whether I was going to lose my stomach, that kind of feeling. So I was really anxious queuing and then it pulled up. But as we pulled away, when I was sat on it and we pulled away, um, although it was fast, I was excited. It was, it was really strange. So this ride has one drop, which measures to 39 feet. So that's, I, I think anything over 30 feet is enough for you to lose your stomach a little bit. I, I still hold the railings at this point and I, I still can't open my eyes um, and I, I do think it depends if you're at the front or the back. I think at the back you go quicker, at the front you go slower because obviously you've got to wait for the back to catch up. This ride is really enjoyable. Each carriage swings and it has a great story. It's a traditional, traditional ride. Um, it doesn't have a dark part. You go in this little cave and then there's all the dwarfs singing. It's really not scary at all. Um, I think it reaches a maximum of 34 miles per hour, which is just enough to enjoy it. So I would definitely recommend this ride. If you're thinking about not going on it, you really have nothing to worry about. I would definitely make this one of your first rides you go on, because you will keep going on it. And if it's coming from me, and I can do it, you can do it. Believe in yourself. Number two, Pirates of the Caribbean. Now, I went on a Pirates of the Caribbean ride in Disneyland in Paris in 2014. To this day, I swear the ride is different because in Paris, you have an incline and then you drop, whereas in Disney World, there's no incline before the drop and the drop is nothing. I always think if you're going up, you've obviously got a, you've got that length to then fall down. But no, not at all. So, and I can remember when we were on this ride, again, it was horrendous in Paris. But this ride, you're in the boat and you go round to the corner and then back round. And it, it gets quite dark and you know there's going to be a drop. It is not a big drop. 
the drop is only 14 feet so I can actually I don't have to hold on at this point and I can keep my eyes open so it's it's a great photo opportunity if you can do this and then you just splash down into the big arena and it's one of the most incredible rides we probably do this about four times every time we're there but this one is nothing to worry about and there's only one drop in it and that is the drop it's a 14 foot drop I think always when you ever have an incline on a ride that builds the anticipation and also all, almost makes the drop worse and I think that is massively like the Tower of Terror which I'll get to in another video. Where... So the next one I've got on here is Big Thunder Mountain. I apparently loved this when I was a little kid, again that was in Paris but there's something about this ride that I will go on and I won't be nervous for but when I'm on it I think the worst bit for me is I feel like the guard, the seat guard, doesn't go down far enough. So when you go around all these turns and twists, I feel like I'm sliding around and I'm going to come out of my seat. I don't know if that's what it's supposed to be or whether I'm always in a carriage that's broken and I might actually die. If someone can clarify this, that'd be great. So, although there's a few drops in this one, the biggest is a 39 foot drop, which is the same as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Dwarfs? Although there's a 39 foot drop in this one, which is exactly the same as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, this one feels more intense. Although it's only 35 miles per hour and Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is 34 miles per hour. So I don't really know where the intensity comes from. I think it's all the, all the little hills and round the corners. It's quite abrupt. Um, you, I, I also feel G-force at some points, well, which I don't on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. So I guess when you're looking at speed and drops, sometimes that doesn't necessarily help as much because it can still feel a little bit more intense. And it does feel more intense. I know a lot of people have said that you should ride Big Thunder Mountain in the dark. I did it and it was a lot more intense than in the daylight. Um, you can't necessarily see all the drops and everything. It just feels like you are on this runaway train, which is obviously what people go for. But still, I wouldn't not go on this ride. I do really enjoy it. And I think this one we probably do once or twice. Um, no more, because I don't enjoy it as much as Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. And because Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is there, I would just prefer to go on that. So... We're now on number four. This one is Splash Mountain. Now, I've been to Disney World twice. The first time I didn't go on it because the drop looked horrendous. So again, I got home and I, I was searching the drop and I was just doing a lot. I was looking at POVs and I still wasn't quite sure. But then Leon was like, yeah, we're going to book it. We're going to do it the first ride. We're going to book a fast pass. Let's do it. So I can remember queuing. And I was thinking, I can't now walk out of this queue because that'll be worse feeling than actually going on the ride. I think you do have to sum up that kind of like feeling that you failed yourself or just go over it because it's like three seconds. So Splash Mountain, I did it for the first time in 2017, which was the last time you went. It was nowhere near as bad as I thought it would be. So let's start with the big drop. It's 49 foot drop at a speed of 40 miles per hour. So we have really built up the intensity, especially from the previous rides that we've gone on about in this video. However, I got the impression that, again, the incline was worse than the actual drop because the anticipation, and you think it's going to be worse than it actually is. But also... As soon as you get that feeling of your stomach dropping, it doesn't necessarily matter how long it goes on for because you've got that horrible feeling anyway. So if we're looking at a 49 foot drop, and Seven Doors Mine Train was 39, it's only a 10 foot drop more, and that's probably less than a second extra. So that's how I kind of calculate things. I can remember it feeling a lot longer than Seven Dwarfs Mine Train drop. I think it's probably a little bit steeper as well as the actual drop itself. But I think as soon as that happens, you might as well, you can be on anything really. So this ride does not have one drop. 
I think it has about three or four. They're small drops, they're really nothing to worry about, especially because you keep seeing the big drop when you go around the actual ride. I feel that you almost forget about the small drops because you're so built up about the big one. Do this first if you're going. If you are nervous, do it first. Get a fast pass, don't think about it, because again, I felt invincible after this ride. I felt incredible. And it really just sets the tone for your holiday instead of maybe doing it last, having your whole day and then talking yourself out of it. It really spoils your day because that's all you can think about. This is if you are really worried about rides as much as me. So push yourself to do these rides and just get it done. So my last ride that I'm analysing from Magic Kingdom is Space Mountain. I've never, ever, ever done Space Mountain. There's only one big drop in Space Mountain, I think, which is a 26 foot drop, which again is nothing, but mixed with the fact that it's in the dark, it might feel like it's a little bit of a bigger drop. So it really depends. If anybody has ridden this ride and can talk me into it, please comment, because everyone says that Space Mountain is one of the best rides to go on. So you've got a 26 foot drop and a 28 miles per hour speed that it gets up to, that's its top speed. So again, that probably feels a lot quicker in the dark because if you think about the statistics here with the drop and the speed, we've conquered worse. We've done, we've done the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and then we've also done Big Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain as well. So this should really be nothing to worry about. So is Space Mountain as intense as people say it is? Will I enjoy it? If you've watched this video and you think I would enjoy it from what I've been saying, please comment because I may just try it in September because we're going back in September this year. Other rides I'd like to mention. Haunted Mansion is one of my favorite rides. It's not scary at all, or it probably should be because of the name. It's not scary. You just sit in it and you just enjoy the, the ride. I think Leon told me the actual creators of it couldn't decide whether they wanted it scary or comedy. So at the beginning you've got a little bit more of a scarier part and then part two you've got a little bit more of a comedy vibe. You can tell when it switches, I think it's when you go into that big room. P-Pan's Flight is one of the best rides I've ever been on as well. It's very similar to the E.T. ride in Universal. Again, nothing to be scared of. You just go up a little bit and you kind of, you're attached to the ceiling and you go round. It's basically like a kid's ride, so we can do this. The People Mover is also a really great ride to go on. It's, it's good if you're kind of like needing a sit down as well and you just want to get some good shots as well. And you get a nice shot of the Magic Kingdom as you go round. But my first time I went on the People Mover, you can tell by a ride if it's going to have restraints how intense it's gonna be. So there were no restraints, you just sat there. But then all of a sudden we went into this really dark patch and this dark patch felt like it lasted about five minutes. And I remember we also didn't move. I think probably the ride had issues or something. Um, and then all of a sudden we went near the Space Mountain ride and I suddenly thought, oh my God, you've conned me. We're going on Space Mountain. I was, I had a bit of a freak out, because you do actually see quite a lot of Space Mountain, but you, you just basically go through it. Um, so that was something I didn't realise, but again, really good. There's nothing else that I could really talk about that could be an issue for people that don't like rides in Magic Kingdom at all. You've got some really good rides, and I definitely check out Jungle Cruise. And one of my favourites as well is the Hall of Presidents. I just find American history really exciting to watch and learn. Although when we were there, Barack Obama got a cheer, Donald Trump got a boo, and we were just sat there full in this room full of Americans and we kind of just edged out the way. That was a little bit awkward, but it's still really good. So, so anyway, that's part one. Next one, we're going to do Epcot. So we're going to have a look at some rides in Epcot and then hopefully this will help you. Again, if you have any advice on Space Mountain Ride and you think I should do it and I should kind of like, we can do this. Anyway, thank you for spending your time watching this video. 
I hope it's helped and I hope you really do conquer your fears. Get on those rides and just enjoy yourself because Disney is the place to enjoy yourself. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later.